Welcome folks to the Balanced Druid Mage Tower Challenge. I'm going to show you how I take care of this fight and explain some of the maybe not so obvious mechanics. So number one, in this phase, the first kite phase with the camera, don't use cooldowns. You know, I use Fury and Warrior Balloon. Those are 45 second buttons. Uh, don't use Incarn. You want that for raced and you don't want to kite carry them out for two minutes, trust me. Um, at the moment, we're on the perimeter so that these purple puddles he drops are not going to be in the main play area. There will be a lot of those that will be in that area, but, you know, at least these ones won't, and they stay there forever, so, you know, might as well. Garam phases at 33%, and you kind of want to make sure you have all your buttons up. Um, as well as mushrooms if possible and that he's kind of in a at least close to the the main area you know position i just love the kite patterns it saves through there so we're just going to do a quick manual eclipse here but then we are blasting everything we're in fucking <laughs> in capping for like no reason but yeah max single target damage that you can do is obviously the name of the game here. Uh, you have a couple one button solutions to ads. Uh, so try not to use them until you have to, like the knockback. Try to use that like a last minute kind of thing. And as much damage as you can get in on the race is the name of the game. Anything under 60% is great, uh, but you can definitely get past that, especially if you remember to uh, re-administer Stellar Flare for your uh, fucking two talent points to actually work. Anyway, so we're back to kiting Karim. There's one little shadow boy right there. And we're also de dealing with hands now. He uh, did take Skull Bash, which always has very creative uh, pathing. And so if you're next to it and you can Skull Bash and it's not going to kill you, awesome. That's probably what you should be doing. Uh, after that, you could always, you know, try to kill the thing before it actually casts, like we'll try it here. Um, but failing either of those, that's when the solar beam comes out. I would definitely try to make sure I kill it before I solar beam it. Solar beam is one of those buttons where it's like, man, if, if you used it, uh, you don't have it for the next thing. And the next thing could be a, a worse thing than what you're currently dealing with. Anyway, um, Incarn up in 26 seconds. So we're going to Cyclone Karim so he stops taking damage just for a little bit. We'll deal with this next hand, throw out one more cycle on. I'll get a three second one. And again, we're right next to this hand. We can just uh, melee kick it, so we will, just to get our positioning back and know that we're pushing Karen like right in the Once again, I must clean up your mess, brother. And then, you know. You just basically finish raced off as quickly as you can. Uh, unlikely you're going to do it before Karim comes out of his little uh, coma. But while you're doing it, you can just make sure you're setting yourselves up to like, we're going to soak this room in summoning, then we're going to get kind of out of here so that we're not going to be, you know, putting crap in this area when Karim uh, springs back up. And as far as he's concerned, we are just CCing him. He's about to come up any second now. And we are going to cycle on him, and I'm going to run by him. Yeah, I'm not dealing with any of that. Just gonna... And I know that summon circle's coming up. We'll cat form action into the disorient, into the soak. And now we just know that we can probably get a full cyclone off. And we're ignoring that in hand, and we're going to Warrior of a Loon. Take this guy out. Obviously, we're going to kick that. One more cast. Ooh, that's pretty dicey. And I would have soaked that rune. We all saw it. So, additionally, if you see these guys, this denizen of the dream, 
They can also soak the hands, right? Cool. So that's how we do the booming mace shower. Um, let's catch our breath and talk about the talents. Uh, I was initially doing a split of either just a skull bash tree and foregoing the thick hide route uh, just to save points. Ended up not really liking the consistency there, but Ursula's Vortex, that got used a lot. Renewal got used a lot. Ursine Vigor, I didn't soak any explosions with bear form, but I definitely had a, a close interaction with bear form there. Anyway, if you're about to soak a hand explosion, hit or, or you know, having specced into this, you just hit bear form within four se seconds of that explosion, top yourself off first, right? You'll be fine. That incapacitating roar is super helpful. Even just a couple seconds or a half a second of ads not meleeing you can mean the difference. What else did we do? Uh, did not do the cooldown reduction on the knockback, which felt bad, but when you're specking into Cyclone, Ursul's Vortex, Renewal, obviously you want the like arrows, Ursine Vigor, you kind of spread so far across the tree, that's probably about as well as it can get. And uh, again, Tiger Dash, another MVP talent, love it. Cyclone, again, alternating that with Entangling Roots was, was the way to go. As far as the spec tree goes, there's a, a few decisions. Uh, Initially, Warrior of Elune is just super good. It's, it's, whenever it's up, you can definitely find something to use it on, and it's typically going to be a hand. Fantastic burst damage and burst astral power generation, which is very, very useful. Uh, the follow up point for Solar Beam does not necessarily allow you to kick an extra hand as far as like cooldowns are concerned, but when you have a, uh, a hard one minute cooldown on that beam, you're only going to be able to kick say the third hand after you've kicked the first one at exactly that same cast point and you know given instability in the universe sometimes it feels like that it's not even up for that third one although it, it technically should be every time keeping it to a 45 second cooldown after it's been used just makes absolute certain you'll be able to use it on that third hand whenever you need it to it can be right away it can be late um, and you're not beholden to when you kicked late last time. And again, you are ideally kicking late because you're trying to kill it before you kick it. And this is, of course, if you're not skull bashing it, which is not always an option. It can sometimes screw up your, your kite pattern with the ads. Um, that said, uh, Stellar Flare, uh, as well as Waning Twilight, uh, huge, you know, 10% damage increase on race every time you're bursting them is just, um, you know, not really something you could do without. You could probably do without Starfall. Um, and in fact, I know you could, but there are times when it is ideal to use it. Uh, Orbital Strike, again, facilitates the fight entirely as a two-minute cooldown for um, Incarnation. Also gives you the funky, you know, Stellar Flare added to all the targets in front of you. A uh, little runway effect, which is very, very cool. And then we basically... Spent as few points as we could to get all the points we really wanted, which, um, again, we went without Front of the Fae here, and this was to grab our Scenarian Mushroom, and it's it's kind of hard to see what may be, you know, I'm not big bird scientist man, but uh, this felt good for me. And, uh, you know, as far as the Fairy Dragon, that is a good damage increase, but it's not necessarily going to be up for all or even part of the burn phases. So at the very least, the rest of these talents are controllable in that I know and I'm getting the benefit from it and there's no way that I'm not going to get benefit during that burst phase so that's like my kind of like fucking low level uh, DPS uh, feely crafty stuff and that's it for the talents and if you got any criticisms any notes any better builds uh, any requests for the next spec that you want to see uh, please let me know in the comments below thanks for watching share with a friend take care guys